Hello, this is Christian. In this video, I'm going to talk about conditional rendering using JSX and React. So in JSX and the template, there's not much you can do other than use the, like very few operators to help you here. So for example, you have uh, the access to this if and and operator uh, to you know test a condition. So in this example here, you have a value you want to check to see if it's larger than 10. If it's so, then uh, the uh, whatever is after the ampersand here, the two percent here will be rendered to the view. And you want to be careful because this is a rule saying that this part of the um, after after the ampersand here must follow the same rule that it must have a root element. Okay, so if it's true, then whatever is after the ampersand will be rendered. If it's false, then nothing gets rendered. Okay, if you want to get like the if and else, then you use the next one, which is this conditional operator or the Elvis operator. You see this all the time. So here you would test a condition and then you follow by the question mark. If it's true, then this part shows. Else if it's false, then the false part shows. Okay. If it gets more complicated than this, then you want to resort to using the traditional uh, JavaScript code inside the code in the source code and you would uh, you know branch out and render a correct um, you know component in that way it's it's much more efficient. All right, so let's go and see how this is done in the code. So back to our demo here. Again, just notice I'm zoomed this in to level 200, so it's kind of big, otherwise it's really tiny. So we have this update button to update our data based on a random number. Okay, so back in the code here. We're in the previous videos, if you haven't seen it, you, want, you might want to go back and watch it so you can understand what's going on here. But basically, I have a parent component here that passed some data down to a child component called child update. I passed three properties to point update in the message from this uh, class down to the child component. And the child component we converted to a class component as well. And here we rendered the point and the button to update uh, the, the uh, state by passing the data. Actually, we're not passing anything. We're just invoking a function which is tied to this variable and the uh, parent class which then update the state to a random number. Okay, so let's just say that in the child component here, um, just for the fun of it, this is inside the JSX syntax here, like this button here, right? For example, let's I want to show this button only, let's just say, for example, if the number is, um, I don't know what, even maybe? Okay, so if it's an even number, then we keep showing. If it's odd, then we, don't, we put a different message or something. Okay, so here you'll put the, you have to wrap the whole thing. So this whole thing here, the button with it, and I'll use the, um, well, either we show, we don't show, okay? We use the um, the logical and operator here. So here I would say if the props, you kind of just have to think in your head. I mean, you cannot say if props, look that, it doesn't work that way, okay? Just uh, declarative language only. So props dot uh, point, if that is divisible by uh, 2 is equal to 0, right? That's an even number. If that's an even number, then if it's true, then render this, whatever it is, after that. Here, I just have one button, so it shows the button. Otherwise, shows nothing. And there's no else part for this one here, okay? So let's, let's save this, and let's go to the view and refresh our page. It's tens even, so for sure it shows up. I don't, okay, so now it won, and now it's gone. So it doesn't show that anymore, right? It's gone. And I reload it again. Try again. Ten, eight, that's fine. Shows it. Uh, zero is even, considered even. And then three is no longer uh, shown. So that's one way you can use. Now, if you want to show like the if and else, then you cannot use this method here. Okay? Instead of this way, you would use the conditional operator. Now that one, I will keep this part. If this, if this is even, then show the button that is clickable. Maybe for example, we do that. Otherwise, we just say it's not functional. It will remove the click button here. So I will copy this uh, twice and put it down here. Okay. So this is the true part. This is the false part. And you break out instead of the ampersand, you put into the question mark, right? If this is true, this is the true part. 
this is the false part down here so you put the colon right there okay so however you structured it it's fine just make sure that again you must have the same um, thing here so if I go here put like P and P right <clears throat> notice that it has a little red arrow here it says you must have a root element I'm pretty sure that what it says so again it follows the same rule that means after if you have more than one tag you have to wrap it with a another like for example a div or span tag um, for example just put outside of it so that it's legit this is not legal but just put it here to so show you that the error goes away okay so but we got we just have only one button so I'm gonna put either you know the button with the clickable or remove that to say not clickable and then we put a message just saying different one let's just say uh, not functional All right and so if I say this go back to the browser even it's updatable right so now odd so again it's not functional so you load again and hopefully you get even nope and load again and so not functional so there you go this is the if and else and uh, so you can use it for that purpose now you can nest these as well right if this is true then you can do something else again using the other operators or you can say if this is true then not functional or you can keep going here if you want so you can do another one here for example if you know something is um, say this props dot point is greater than five for example then again you just have to say for the same rule wrap this with the whole thing here okay this is the whole true part if that is true you test that if it's true then what is the condition uh, uh, otherwise what is the other condition and, and so on so you can go something like this then um, show something else okay um, oh, something is going on here oh probably I don't need the curly again yeah it's already in there <clears throat> Okay, so I have another conditional operator here. Just say uh, no button, nothing here, right? If it's if it's not if it's even, then it shows the button with the clickable. If it's not even, if it's odd, but if the odd number is greater than five, then we say we just say uh, not functional. If it's less than five, then it's going to be no button. Okay, we'll see if you get one of those. Okay, so if you go even 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 well and not functional because it's greater than five right it has to be less than five to be uh, no button so we go again hopefully we catch a three or a one there we go one so we get no button okay so you can see that uh, works just fine it gets complicated so the one the more it, it gets like this I mean it becomes uh, unfeasible if that's the case, then you want to break it out and uh, do it inside the code here. All right. So let's undo all of this and uh, <clears throat> do it the other way. So let's just say you want to show this two button here, but um, and, and let, let's remove all of these here. Show you a different method. Of course, just remember your regular JavaScript. Okay. So I can do here. Um, and set the render function here. Let me just remove this for now. Because I can check the props of the value. I can do if the props dot, uh, this props dot uh, point, same as before, right? If it's even, if it's even, then maybe I want to render something, right? Return something here, else return something here. Okay? And maybe I don't want to put the code directly here. I could. I could put this return here, right? Like this. And then put another one here. This one has the button. This one here has the button without that part. So we got the same idea as before, except now my code have two uh, pieces here. So when it gets like that, it will still work. If we go back and refresh it, right? You see that nine, uh, I see it's not functional. I did put the message, but it's not functional. Only positive numbers can be updated. But e odd, e I mean, even numbers okay so you can do this way or you can say you know what I'm gonna return use a function to do that right so of course don't forget your functions you can put up here you can put it inside here doesn't matter 
um, you know, uh, we can put it inside here if you want. Let me just get ugly. If you put it inside, there's no, there's no point, but uh, it doesn't matter where you put it, okay? Um, but it does make your code uh, um, shorter inside the, the render function. So you can say here, function, um, you know, uh, update, this is a normal one, uh, button, oh, um, click, click a ball, I don't know, something like that. And then here, we'll just return this in here, right? I do another one here, function uh, button not clickable. And then I put that here as well. And then you put that over there. And then just make sure you pass in the props. So, because the props goes in here. Or you may not because it's in the global space. Okay, well, it's no, it's not in the, in the class. So you need to pass the props to uh, this uh, function here. And then now, when, and so in here you can do a return, the uh, button clickable, right? And then here you have to return a button uh, not clickable. And you pass in again the props object to it because it needs to get access to the through props. Okay, so you see that render function looks shorter now by using the other function to return the uh, view back. So here is the prop. So again, I don't have access to this anymore. It would just say props dot that, uh, props dot message, and then same thing here. So I'm just gonna modify a little bit here and there, right? And now um, we'll, we'll put a message here saying, um, I just put a message here is not functional. Okay. And let's see what happens. Save that. So go to the browser. And I got an error. Oh, I mistyped this props. Uh, yeah, line 28. So right there, just know this. Just say props. Okay, let's do one more time and see what happens. Uh, prop is not defined and the other function uh, like 51, 53, I probably missed up something there. Uh, 51, 53, uh, yep, here. Uh, this props, here we go. Can't forget that, right? We're in the class still, it's in the class space. So you have to put class this something. Okay, here we go. So if it's even, again, odd, so it's not functional and even, even, odd. All right, so that is another way for you to do that. Now, this is just a function, it's a, it is a component in this in this example here. We pass in the props to it. Um, I'm passing the props from this class. So notice I use a function call instead. You could do it differently as well. As you can see, there's a lot of ways, right? So for this one, for example, I could change this into JSX instead of just regular function, uh, JavaScript functions. I can use the uh, JSX this way. And then this would be a tag, right? Button tag, like this. Okay, and then I need to pass in the props. So the props will be assigned to a, a member of the same ID you pass from the child to the uh, parent to the child. I have to assign that to another variable called maybe just um, data equals the the props. This props. Okay, kind of same thing here. I say I pass it to a tag instead of a function uh, construct uh, method. So now it's the same thing except now I have passed in data instead of props. So in this clickable function, I don't have access to props anymore. I do, but not the props here. I have a variable called data. So you have to say props dot data that point. Props dot data. So you see how this goes, right? And then the more you pass to it, the more data it gets. And so this will get a little bit complicated. But yeah, you should, you should follow that uh, that notation. You're passing properties to props and so on. 
that it would work just fine. Okay, if I go back into the browser and review it, you see that it's no problem. Okay, so just like before, and there you go. So a couple ways to use conditional rendering in React.